brain. If you believe you must be big in order to be tough, then you should get to know me. I'll teach you other stuff. I'm Madeline. I'm Madeline. I'm In an old house in Paris that was covered with vines. Allons-y, Genevieve. Lived twelve little girls in two straight lines. They left the house at half past nine. In two straight lines, in rain or shine. The smallest one was Madeline. What? Miss Clavel, Miss Clavel, look out there! The snow is so blind. Look at the snow. What is wrong? It is all right, my dears. We will just have to call a chimney sweep the minute we get back from the circus. Yes, Madeline, hurry! If, if we, we miss the bus, we will miss the circus! A very small circus had come into town. A circus which starred the world's smallest clown. There he is! Monsieur Funny Bones! <laughs> it makes me laugh just to see his picture. <laughs> The little girls could hardly wait to see a clown who was oh so great. <laughs> Merci. Did you know that Miss Clavel led them to their places. They sat right in front with happy faces. When do we get to see Monsieur Funny Bones, Miss Clavel? Yes, what do we see him? Is he coming out first? Is he how much longer? We want Monsieur Funny Bones! Patience, my darlings. The circus is full of many other wonders. Welcome to Le Cirque Extraordinaire! And now, to open our magnificent show... Antoine the Amazing! Oh. All the girls were thunderstruck to see the strong man lift his truck. <gasps> but now and then some eyes were hiding from the daring bareback riding. Be careful! <gasps> Soon there was great laughter in the stands when a bear rode a bicycle with no hands. Is he not astounding, Madeline? I could watch him forever. Not me. Then we would never get to see Monsieur Funnybones. You are right. 
I hope we see him very soon. Yes, very soon. You will, my dears. I am sure he is backstage right now preparing for his performance. Look, everyone. Monsieur Teeny Bones cannot even reach the latch. <laughs> <laughs> If he were any smaller, no one could even see him. <laughs> Mesdames and Messieurs, your attention, s'il vous plaît. Before you enjoy the great highlight of our circus, I have an important task to perform. An important task? What could it be? I will select an assistant from the audience to help Monsieur Funny Bones in his act. An assistant to Monsieur Funny Bones? I hope it is me, no me. The crowd held its breath as the ringmaster pondered, and over each face his thoughtful eyes wandered. He did not choose the very boldest. He passed right by the very oldest. He skipped the wildest and the tallest, and in the end, he chose the smallest. And what is your name, ma petite amie? Madeline. Mademoiselle Madeline, you are exactly the right size to be Monsieur Funny Bones' official assistant. Bravo! 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 Merci beaucoup. Zut alors! Can this be true? <laughs> Mesdames et messieurs! I do not know how I am going to break this news to you. You must all go home now. The circus is cancelled. Cancelled? What does it mean? Oh. What, does it mean? Oh. what has happened, monsieur? A great mystery, madame. The star of our show is nowhere to be found. Monsieur Funny Bones has disappeared. <gasps> Madeline and the girls were so upset they told Miss Clavel, We cannot go yet! The mystery of the missing clown soon brought a policeman of great renown. Detective Moreau! Bonjour, Madeline. What are you doing here? I was going to be Monsieur Funnybone's assistant, but he disappeared. Oh, la la! Do not worry, ma petite. We will find him. Detective Moreau knew just what to do. He ordered them to find a clue. Anything. A hat, a, a coat, a glove, a shoe. They searched most carefully round the ring till Moreau cried out. What is this thing? That is Monsieur Funnybone's sock. And here is another one. Detective Moreau now had a plan. Follow the trash. He rushed away to another can. Monsieur Funnybone's trousers! Monsieur Funnybone's shirt! Monsieur Funnybone's chapeau! By now, they had traveled more than a mile, and Detective Moreau broke into a smile. The case is solved. Solved? Yes, Monsieur Funnybones no longer wishes to be a clown. How do you know this? 
Oh, this clothing is the proof. He has thrown it away in order to become someone else. But who? The trail leads exactly to that man over there. And I will prove it. Bonjour, Monsieur Funny Bones. We have learned your secret. I am afraid not, Detective Moreau. Monsieur Funny Bones is a much smaller man. Much smaller. Oh. Then, unable to solve this sad situation, he climbed in his car and returned to the station. And on the way back to the vine-covered house, Madeline was as sad as a lost little mouse. Cheer up, Madeline. Maybe you did not get to be Monsieur Funnybone's assistant, but I did not either. Nor I. I was not thinking about me. I was thinking about Monsieur Funnybone's. Why would anyone want to stop being a clown? Clowns make people happy. Yes, clowns make people happy. We oui. happy. Look, Miss Clavel, it's getting worse. When they finally got home, alas, and alack, the smoke from that chimney was even more black. And so Miss Clavel began calling around to see if a chimney sweep could be found. She rang many numbers until she was dizzy, but every sweep in Paris was already busy. This is most distressing. How will we ever get our chimney clean? Then a sad little man, all covered with grime, knocked on the door at just the right time. Bonjour. He had noticed their problem from way down the street and offered to help them right now and tout sweet. The sad little man settled right down to work. The task was most dreary, but he did not shirk. <laughs> what a tiny little man! We oui, he is almost as tall as Madeline. <laughs> when the job was completed, they could not believe their eyes. The view of their chimney was such a surprise. The chimney was spotless, above and below, and the smoke coming out was whiter than snow. You did a wonderful job, Monsieur Chimney Sweep. Merci, Miss Clavel. No one has ever cleaned our chimney so well. That is because he is so tiny, he can squeeze into tight places. <laughs> We're really teeny. <laughs> Chloe, Nicole, you have hurt the feelings of Monsieur Chimney Sweep. Apologize, s'il vous plaît. Pardonnez-moi, Monsieur Chimney Sweep. Yes, we did not mean to be rude. Monsieur Chimney Sweep did not reply. He dabbed at something in his eye. And then he set off down the road, struggling with his heavy load. Hmm. Aha! Monsieur Funny Bone! Did you say something, mademoiselle? What is that? That is nothing. Then let me see it. This is just like Monsieur Funnybone's coat, trousers, and socks. <gasps> you are Monsieur Funnybone's. The chimney sweep is Monsieur Funnybone's. Impossible. Can this be? You are right. I was Monsieur Funnybone's. But I will never be him ever again. No more funny bones? Never. I am far too sad to be a clown. A terrible thing has happened. I have lost my laughter. Miss Clavel got on the phone. We found Monsieur Funny Bones. Très bien, Miss Clavel. Detective Moreau sped there right away. And the ringmaster came to have his say. Please, 
please, Monsieur Funny Bones. I am begging, imploring. Without you to help us, our circus is boring. And then the performers formed a committee, begging their clown to return and be witty. Not even if you give me the key to the city. I demand it. Return to the circus. No, I can never be a clown again. Please leave me alone. Everyone backed away at the sound of his shout. Then he climbed up the chimney and wouldn't come up. Monsieur Funny Bones, come down. It is no use. It is hopeless. Monsieur Funny Bones has lost his laughter, and we have lost our clown. That very same night, when the old house was quiet, Madeline had an idea and decided to try it. Come out, Monsieur Funny Bones. It is safe now. Everyone is gone. I brought you some milk and shortcake. Thank you, Madeline. Merci beaucoup. Why are you so sad? Because everyone laughs at me. They are supposed to laugh at you. You are a clown. They do not laugh because I am a clown. They laugh because I am so small. Maybe they are not laughing at you. They are laughing with you. I do not think so. Well, even if they are, it does not matter. It does not matter? How can you say that? Because when they are laughing at your outside, they do not see how you really are inside. If you believe you must be big in order to feel grand, then you should get to know me. I'll help you understand. I used to think that being funny had to do with size Until I met sweet Madeline, she opened up my eyes I'm funny bones, I'm funny bones, I'm tall cause I can laugh I'm funny bones, I'm funny bones, tall as a giraffe We're short but sassy, cute but classy, miniature but strong If you're looking for true power, with us you can't go wrong Right, Madeline. And someday perhaps I can laugh and be happy enough to be a clown again. I bet you can be a clown right now. No, I cannot. Not yet. Monsieur Funnybone's face was still sour as a pickle, but Madeline <sighs> fixed that with a fast little tickle. <laughs> Your attention, s'il vous plaît! Introducing the world's smallest and greatest clown, Monsieur Funny Balls! <laughs> and his magnificent assistant, Mademoiselle!
<laughs> it is so good to have you back, Monsieur Funny Bones. I am sorry if I hurt your feelings. <laughs> Is it not magnifique to have Monsieur Funny Bones back in the circus, Detective Moreau? Oh, indeed, Miss Clavel. This has definitely been one of my most successful cases. The girls went home and broke their bread. We love our bread, we love our butter, but most of all, we love each other. And brushed their teeth and went to bed. And then Miss Clavel came in and said, J'ai fatigué. I am so tired. I have never had a day when I laughed so hard. It was good to see Monsieur Funnybones being so happy again. Mm. I hope, my darlings, that you will never lose your laughter. Do you think we will ever lose our laughter? Never. <laughs> Twelve little clowns jumped out on the floor and tickled and giggled until they were so. And that's all there is. There isn't any more. If you believe you must be big in order to be tough, then you should get to know me. <laughs>